Mm. And Julie, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I know, my gosh, Jeff, I've missed you. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Jeff and I are on the um, Board of Assessment oh, of Appeals, mm, and yes. we've seen We've seen each other the last two evenings. So it's oh. just three nights in a row. <laughs> ah. yep. um, Diane Cheryl's joining us. Hi, okay, Cheryl. Thank you. All right, so let's, I'll get us started. Um, we'll begin the March meeting of the uh, Conservation Commission. I was reflecting back, and this has been, um, it, was, it was a year. It's been exactly a year since our last in-person meeting. It was the first um, Wednesday in March. Wow. Um, so we had a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of meetings like this, I know, um, like everybody. But one thing I was going to add was um, uh, my wife and I have a, a Google Calendar that we share where we put things like appointments or meetings or whatnot. And um, recently, you know, for months that calendar was, you know, totally blank. But recently that calendar has been filling up. And I think that's a sign. That's a sign that there's more things happening now. Um, and then even look at, look at our meeting tonight. Like we have a lot to talk about, much more, the, more so than we did six months ago. So good, good like nice – Interesting little signs here and there, um, steps towards a normalcy, right? So, yes. Um, hope everyone's there. And Julie, you, you said you got your shot today, was it? No, no, I made an appointment <clears throat> for the end of March. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, Where will you get it, Julie? I was able to get it It's um, at the mall. I gather huh. it's a big parking lot thing in front of Lord and Taylor. Yep. Oh, that opens tomorrow, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know when it opens. I just know the the other day when I logged on, it wasn't there all day, and then at four o'clock, a whole bunch of appointments opened up, and I snagged one. Good. There you go. Yeah. All right. Um. So let's begin. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? Cheryl, Marge, Tony. I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thanks for thanks for joining us again. So here we go. Let's start. Let's go right down the agenda. Um, we have our minutes from last meeting, um, from February third. Anyone have any uh, comments or corrections on those? I have one correction on a name. <laughs> yeah, yes, Mars. Go for it. And the Barn Quilt Project, the girl's name is Sue Bailey, not Julie. Okay, I got it. Wow. Marge, you are a, a great proofreader. I love it. There we go. I think there All is right. a Julie Bailey in town, though. <laughs> but that's not her. All right. Any, I, know um, I know that there is a Sue and a Julie, and it was just a, a mistake on my part. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Any um, any other comments or corrections on the the, the minutes? I'll All right. A motion to accept the minutes of the February third meeting. Okay. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That'll then take us to guest and public comment. Correspondence. Jeff, did, did we you, have correspondence? Did you see the email I sent you this afternoon? Uh, yes, I did. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, let me put that in, we'll put that in correspondence. Um, all right. You know what I'm going to do if I can, um, 
uh, Alice, if I can share the if I can share the screen, it might be easier so people could read it. Um, if I'm allowed to do that. Okay, you should be all set. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. All right, so we have, uh, let's see. Okay, so this was from Cheryl to, um, from, from Michael Matson, correct, Cheryl? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, So Cheryl, at seven tonight, I'm hosting the long range planning committee meeting for church. Sorry we had this conflict as I would like to share thoughts with everyone. Um, so this is from us, or to us from Michael Matson. As some of you may know, Gert and Kenny Erickson were my aunt and uncle. Gert Matson Erickson was my father's oldest sister. After Gert and Kenny were married in the early 1960s, they moved into the small farmhouse on the property that was owned by Kenny's parents. It was a perfect place for them to settle down. They loved the outdoors. They loved gardening. They loved cows and chickens and roosters and cats. They loved horses. They loved their property, their house, and barns. What made it such a wonderful homestead was not the physical buildings, but the property itself. Seeing the wildlife that thrived in the back lot and the grazing cattle and horses gave them joy. Sharing the farm with their community multiplies this joy. Pushing toothpaste back into the tube is not easy. It might be convenient to allow for development of open space. Deciding later to undo development is not easy. We need to keep this land protected. Preserving Erickson Farm as open space was what Gert wanted. She wanted generations of people in Brookfield to enjoy the land, enjoy the unique habitat, and appreciate protected open space. Permanently preserving Erickson Farm as deed-restricted, protected open space is what Gert and the families always wish for, this parcel of land now owned by the town of Brookfield. Thank you to all in the commission and in the community who are working diligently to make this wish a permanent reality. Michael Matson. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. Um, any comments on that? Let me stop sharing my screen here. Are we going to talk about that later, about the Erickson property? Yes, that's on the agenda. Okay, so yeah. we'll comment then. How's that? Yes. That's a lovely letter. Perfect. Can I just make one comment? Yes. Uh, yeah, I go ahead. Gertrude, I knew Gertrude very well, and I think that her nephew stated very well what Gertrude and Kenny would have liked for the property. I think it was well worded. Yeah. Uh, any other correspondence? So that moves us now into treasurer's report. We have a treasurer? <laughs> Do we have a treasurer? No. <laughs> Um, there's been no change okay. in the numbers. <clears throat> All right. That will now take us to uh, old business, Erickson Deed. So um, I had at our last meeting, and if you look at the minutes, we had talked to, about this. Um, and uh, I sent a um, kind of like a, a revised deed to um, Alice to then send to the, uh, the town attorney. Um, very few changes. I just reworded um, changing. Uh, I eliminated the ball fields, uh, parentheses, and then uh, instead of recreation, we, we changed it to passive recreation. But um, so sending it off to Alice. And so, Alice, you have the, uh, the other end of that report, right? Um, I think I sent it to you, Tom. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have it handy, but I can get it on my computer. Oh, no, no. I mean, if you just want to just comment on, on what happened then at, on the other end of it. Oh, I sent it to Tom Beecher. <laughs> and um, I have to look to see what he said, to be honest. I don't but know. he said it's it's uh, it's it can't be changed. Once it, yeah, the exact wording, uh, once it's, um, 
I'll, I'll look. I'll look that up real quick. Okay. But it can't be. But here. But the thing. So look, we tried, and um, we were doing it as more of a preventative measure anyway. Um, you know, as far as I know, at this moment, there's nothing. There's no plans to develop there now anyway. So um, I do know that that um, the Brookfield Baseball um, Association is looking to. Um, and I, I'm not sure where this came from. It, I was, it was a meeting last week and I didn't pursue it. Um, I didn't want to like get off topic and pursue the whole thing. Um, they're, they're on the idea that they're going to put a, um, a large ball field behind Wiskineer. So there's two existing smaller ball fields. Um, and then the idea is to put another, a new 90 foot diamond back there. Now, I don't know what the space is. Um, I know that there that that's Iroquois property back there, correct? Yeah. Um, yeah, we've actually worked with, or Steve has worked with Iroquois, um, and possibly getting the property back there to use as a ball field. I don't know where it stands, though. I don't know if Sue knows. Uh, I know that the property that he's he's talking about uh, does have a pitch. Um, we'd have to do a lot of backfill to it. My understanding from a meeting that I was in the other day is that when the portables come down, we can have a 90 foot and a 60 foot, but in town, we're still going to be short a field. Yeah. Cause you're losing another one at, um, at Huckleberry. Yeah. But, but the bottom line though, for our purposes though, is that, um, you know, Erickson is really not on the radar. So Correct. They, Correct. They, they've moved on from that. So. Correct. Mm. Um, that is really disappointing. I would be very interested to see the attorney's letter. Okay, it's not. It's his opinion, so it's not for on the public record. But I can send it to you. Or I, I'm yeah. I'm looking for it here. I, I oh, here we go. Okay. Got it. We're really not supposed to, since it's just opinion. Um, okay. 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 Confidential, basically, to the commission. So we don't want to show it on streaming necessarily. That yes. Okay. I see. Um, I disagree with his opinion, <laughs> but I don't know where to go from there. I mean, it, I, that's what I do in my job. I read deeds and I talk to lawyers and real estate agents and people who buy property and schedule A's change all the time. So I don't know what he's talking about. Especially it's a town owned property. So I, that's bizarre, but he's well, an attorney. So well, I would you, hope if that, Julie, if you want to send me a letter stating what you feel is correct, I can get it to him and he can. Okay. Know, give his yeah. Opinion to that. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so next up on that is the uh, on old business is the Gursky improvements, and that is also something that we had mentioned in the, um, in the at the February meeting um, about doing that. And Alice had sent out um, the quote right from twenty fifteen, I believe it was twenty sixteen ish, twenty fifteen. Um, yeah, that was crazy money. So we're talking in the neighborhood of ninety thousand dollars, correct? Yeah. I it was Thirty. No. That that sounds closer to the number that was in my head. Okay, let me let me share here. Um, let me share again. That's doing it through the town public works as opposed to actually going out for bid, and they were okay with that. Um, okay, wait. Which what which improvement are we talking about now? I'm sorry. The road. Oh, the road. Okay. Yeah, I thought we were talking about the road. Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the 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 barn restorations. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, really more, that's more like a quarter million or half a million. Yeah. Crazy money. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So this was so as of twenty November twenty fifteen, we have um, roughly about sixty eight thousand plus uh, materials and supplies are extra. Should be about twenty two thousand. Um, so that takes us, yeah, closer to 90, but that was also, as Alice pointed out five years ago. So and the cost of lumber is just about doubled if you bought any. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And I mean, it when I brought it up, it, it was more to um, not to do a whole rebuild or whatever the that thing that Alice sent out was very extensive um, repair. I'm mostly talking about maybe protecting what we can, like fixing the holes and, uh, you know, a window. And I'm not talking about renovating the whole barn so people can walk in it. I'm just talking about keeping it from, I understand when I say keeping it from getting worse, there's only so much you can do, but to invest the time and effort and the money that's already been into that barn to not do anything else, not put any money into it to, I mean, cause some of the wood is coming off of it. There's holes in the side. If just those things could be aesthetically repaired that was my suggestion. But yeah, I agree, Julie. And, and it's like, what, what, it, you know, what's the future of that place now? You know, um, yeah. those buildings. Um, a couple of years ago, Mac did do repairs on the building. You'll see some yeah. more, um, but it's extremely dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's a very tall, that's really up high where that one or two pieces of wood have fallen down now. So it's, there's a hole. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know who, if we want to talk about even it's only going to more wood is just going to keep falling down. So what do we do? So uh, Alice, my, my going back to 2015, where was that money going to come from to, uh, to do the restoration? Uh, no plan on that. <laughs> okay. I, I know everyone mentions grants all the time, right? Uh, yeah. Well, remember that um, the Gursky committee before we um, uh, mm -hmm. were charged with this, did get two grants. One, which um, somebody kind of took them for a ride, you could say, a mm -hmm. contractor. And that's why the 10 year easement was put in place. That's the kind of grant you can get is something that requires a 10 or 20 year easement through um, state historic. So you'd have to, you'd be back to where we were, which is, you know, um, having to do Native American digs before you could say put in a parking lot or we I don't think we want to go down that road again do we <laughs> no I don't think so hmm. yeah so that's that's where we've been the last couple of years with with Gursky so that but there may be other grants besides the historical state of Connecticut type of grant where we could maybe look into old barn restoration type thing. Yeah, you guys could look into that. Sure. Okay. Maybe I'll do that. Okay. Um, any other comments or suggestions on Gursky improvements? We were going to now, are we going to talk about the road? Yes, because, um, I have to know what budget you want to take it out of. Um, do you want to take it out of the conservation budget and then the remainder out of the um, house revenue? Because it's kind of for both. It's for people visiting yeah. Gursky and for the house itself and that property. And we have a lot in that conservation still, correct? I believe so, yes. Um, the other thing is possibly the snapweed spraying this. Spring. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, yeah, well, we don't want to leave ourselves with nothing, though, either for until July, right? So, um, so the cost of the driveway and the road is 30000 Yeah. And we were talking about taking how much out of conservation budget? Well, that's what I don't know. Um, let me get an exact number. How much is in the other fund? Um, there's there's enough for, to make up the difference. Yeah. Yeah, I would say even if we did like a like a ten twenty, um, or an equal fifteen fifteen, but like I said, that doesn't leave us with a lot. But um, yeah. 
Okay, I'll get some numbers of what we have in the budget for next time. So when are they? When would they do it? They want to do it as soon as the um, asphalt plants open up. Oh, okay. okay. But I don't think they'll, well, you know, I don't think they'll um, come knocking on our door for the payment. Yeah, so they're they're gonna go ahead and do it regardless of, of what we getting pay. getting money first, right? Right. Yeah. I'm just okay. envisioning the garden people wanting to get up there and screaming and yelling, and I don't know how long it would take to do so that it could be driven on. How how far is the road going? Is it going just to the house, or is it going all the way up to the get, uh, to the garden? Just to the house. Just to the house. Where Spags lives. Yep. And out to the out to 133. Yes. Yeah. Yes. With a little parking area there, like it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's in a, it's in rough shape. I, I still see that porta potty there. I don't know who who put that there, but um. I guess it fell over. But I told um, they asked. Oh us no! For <laughs> <laughs> <with> the wind. <laughs> oh, boy. oh gosh! You are right. <laughs> Liz emailed me um, if we could have that fixed. I said, well, actually, it's not ours. And Mary was going to find out who it belonged to. So I don't know. All right. Hmm. All right. That'll take us now to, oh, actually, anything anything more on Gursky uh, improvements? Well, I, I would suggest that before we decide how much to take out of the conservation budget that we try to project the, the remainder of our expenses through the end of this fiscal year. Yeah, yeah, great point, Tony. Yeah, so we have uh, possibly nap, napweed spraying and we have some other, um, I, don't, I don't think any other major costs in addition to that. Um, Just through, apple trees, hmm. did we take out money for apple trees already? That's no, not, not yet. Me. How much Not do you yet. think that? Um, I'll have to ask them. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I think they were about eighty a piece. And did we pay Shakespeare's Garden? There was that balance. That's been paid, yes. So okay. I'll, I'll get the updated budget, and we'll see about apple trees and spring. Okay. And anything else? Okay. How much is the napweed spray usually? Do we know off the Top of your yeah. head. $4,950 usually. $4,950. Yeah. Okay. All right. So actually good segue into um, the Nature Center now with with, uh, with new business um, and uh, Nature Center Memorial and Beehives. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that Alice um, did some work with getting... Um, an estimate on, um, on on a bench, right, Alice? Mm -hmm. And let me let me bring that up here. So, okay, yeah, the estimate was actually on the metal bench, um, and she didn't get back to me today about the one that's more wood like, but it's actually a plastic composite. Yeah, may may I share that, Alice? Yeah, you still can. You still have co-host. Yeah. Oh, not the bar. Right. Here we go. The bench. Yeah, there we go. So that's like a, a sample of what of what you had envisioned, correct? Well, that's the one that's out in front of Town Hall yeah. at the, warm, uh, at the yeah. uh, memorial. Yep, with the uh, with the little do plaque. Have, do we know what the plaque would say? Um, I could ask Stephanie's family, but probably something just like in memory of Stephanie Landis. Okay. But this, but this is the one they quoted you for. Yes, because that's the one that is um, at Kids Kingdom, and that's the one that Parks and Rec is using quite a bit. Yep. And I think that's like the one up at the top of the fields at Williams Park, right? Yeah, I think it's, I think it is, oh. yes. And then, so about 815, but, but this 815 is for the metal bench. Yes. Yeah. So my yeah, one of my questions though was, um, and and I don't know if anyone knows this, but what what would her family like? The, the, do they want a bench? 
Yeah, they were talking about a bench and maybe a, a tree like a weeping cherry, and we would install the bench and we could all install the tree at the, um, you know, at the memorial. Okay. Oh, nice. Can the bench be like permanently installed somehow? Yeah, it can be um, mounted in concrete. That's what the ones uh, yeah. Parks and Rec has done. Are. Awesome. Great. A weeping cherry sounds lovely. Mm. Okay. And Julie, did you want to speak about the, the beehives at the Nature Center? Um, I just know that I'm getting bees um, in April. And if I can, um, we can talk about it at that time. About I know we've talked about this in the past, having like a hold harmless thing type written up for me. Um, and there would be an electric fence um, around the beehive. So mm -hmm. is that a solar it, electric fence or are you going to need power from somewhere? No, it's solar. Oh, good. I have the um, solar part of it. I just have to purchase the fence. Um, but that's not a big deal. I'm going to be doing that anyway. Um, so it's, it's not going to happen yet. <laughs> but I, I want to make sure everybody's okay with it. Um, should I ask permission? Should I, what should I do? Um, well, probably be good to check with Chris who lives there. Of course. Yes. Uh huh. What if, I think I have his email, Alice, would it be okay if I emailed him or should I call him or? You can email him. Okay. Just make sure he gets it because I don't know how often he checks it. Okay. Yeah, it won't be near his house. It's more, um, oh. if you go up to where the new garden is and you, you take that right instead of going straight. Um, and there is an old bench there um, in some older pine type trees. Mm -hmm. um, I was think because the a beehive has to be where the sun when the sun comes up in the morning, the sun has to shine on it. Um, facing west, I guess. Um, so that's where I was thinking of putting it kind of behind the garden, but not close to the pathway, you know, on the other side of the stone wall. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the field is only mowed when we asked Bobby Fisher to do it. Um, okay. So he'd be the only one, I think, dealing with the field, unless it's in the trail, then that would be, it could be. No, it wouldn't be in the trail. Okay. Yeah, I would want to, you know, we'd put it right in the middle of the field and he could just mow around it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. We have, um, well, okay. So, so then the next steps with the bench would be to uh, see what their estimate is for an actual, uh, like the one outside the town hall, right? Yeah. And then, then I'll ask the family if they have any preference, if you want. Okay. And then obviously the family would have say in, in what, what would be engraved. Um, and then we could move ahead with that. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, next up is, um, and, and under new businesses, Dunsinane Road Open Space. So this was something that um, I was contacted on a few weeks ago by Paul L. Conan, um, who I have spoken to in the past. Who He was going to come to uh, one of our meetings last year before the uh, pandemic hit to talk to us about or to advise us on what to do about happy landings. But then obviously everything um, went to pot after that. But um, from the Northwest Con Land, Con well, sorry, the Northwest Connecticut Land Conservancy, formerly Weontonog, or Weontonog is now part of them, right? Um, right, Marge, you're you're a you're a member of that group, right? Right. right. Okay. So they didn't. Weontonog didn't become them. Weontonog just joined them, correct? Weontonog no longer exists. It is now the Western. Yeah. You know that, yeah. 
Okay. They want to purchase, um, I believe it's 46 acres. I don't, I don't have the exact number off of the end of Dunsinane Road. Okay. Um, and one of the things, I'll, I'll bring that up on a map. And Hegarty currently owns that property. And they are willing to, they're not going to just, um, they're not going to donate it, but they're, but they're willing to sell it for a very low price. They, you know, from what Paul had explained to me is that they're looking to, um, just get a little something for it. Um, and so what Paul ultimately wants from us is a, um, you know, if we have anything in open space fund to contribute towards this purchase. And one of the nice things about this property is, and I'm trying to uh, bring it up here, is where it is. Um, and, and Marge, I know you're very familiar with, with where we're going with this, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, let me, uh, let me share again uh, with you guys. Um, so he's, so where the, this is not really a big, a big issue, but he's just at the point of now finding out what exactly what that number is that Hegarty, um, is asking for. And then we can kind of get back with what we want to do about it. Uh, we do have some money in an open space fund. Alice, uh, had found that out for us. So, um, you know, we could possibly contribute, but the, but the other thing is though, the town would not be the, uh, you know, the proprietor of that property. It would be Northwest land conservancy. Um, I, I can't, why can't I see anything up here? Um, Google maps. There we go. So, you know, Paul had asked, I don't know if the town would be okay with that. And, you know, I guess the town would be right. They, they wouldn't have to manage it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Northwest, Northwest land would manage it. So oh, here's Burr farm. So you see, I'm, I'm sharing a map here, Marge. Um, wow. there's Burr farm and there is the end of Dunson and where this property is. So it runs into each other. This Burnham wood development here is if for some reason on this map, it could be wrong. It is showing that it's like a protected space, but I, I've never heard of that before. Um, so this Burnham wood, it's just the name of, the, of this subdivision. Jeff, I'm looking at this uh, planometric open space plan in Brookfield. And yep. the back of the bird property on the north of the bird dingle woods and Dunsinane, and there's a, a piece of property there that is already open space. Are you showing that on your map? It is to the, uh, on the eastern side toward, uh, toward the Newtown line, away from Dunsinane on the eastern side. There's a, a I don't know how many acres, and I, I forget, Alice, do you remember that piece of property? Um, it's 15, landlocked. 15A Dunsinane is 12.96 acres, and the town owns that, and it's through a long trail that goes to that property from the end of Dunsinane. And it's, but it's landlocked. Well, yes. it's got a trail, a 25-foot easement, basically, that goes um, from the end of Dunsinane. Okay. But, but this here is the, the east parcel of Burr Farm, which is wooded. Wood would border this property. So you'd have right. two, uh, you know, open protected lands, um, you know, connecting. So that that's that's the appeal there for that um, helping out with that purchase. So I mean, what kind of money are we talking about? I don't know. We didn't we didn't get that far. Um, you know, and he he wasn't asking for a specific amount either. He was just asking if we would be interested and if and you know if there was anything in our open space fund that we could contribute. Do we know how much they're going to? Bye. No, he said he, he would get back to me on that. So that's, oh, so that's okay. what we're waiting with that. Yeah. So okay. more information to come, but just something to, to think about and consider. Okay. So we could have a large part of this, of this land here protected. So. That would be great. Absolutely. Um, barn quilt. That is the next item on the uh, agenda. I 
th through Marge, I had a nice conversation with Sue Bailey the other day. Very nice. Sue Bailey, very nice, very informative. Um, and you know, like I, you know, I think the last time I showed the um, the website of the New Milford Barn Trail, uh, the Barn Quilt Trail, and um, you know, I, I think they did a great job with that. And she was um, giving me some. She was going to come tonight, um, but I, but she couldn't make it. And I was like, oh, let me just like tell them some information anyway, and then um, and th then maybe we could have her join us at maybe our April meeting. Um, but but she said, you know, one of the things that, that she mentioned with this project, she said it, it, the cost would be about $1,000 per quilt. And the quilt is, um, you know, the quilt is, I forgot the term. It's not, it's, it's not wood. It's, uh, it's like, it, it's that plastic, um, oh, what is, what is the term? It's kind of like the decking that people use for their decks. Kind of, yeah. It's not, it's not going to rot, you know, yeah. uh, and they also put a, uh, a protective, uh, coat on there as well. Once the design is done. So to kind of protect the design on there. And, you know, I, I said, so, you know, who, she said, you know, the town or their town, New Milford, the public works, they installed the, uh, you know, the, the, um, the town didn't purchase the, the barn quilt the the materials but the town helped to install the 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 park and rec i mean not park and rec public works went around and, and you know um installed these on the on the barn walls um throughout town but she said yeah like i said she said it's about a thousand dollars per quilt once you start talking about the the actual material and then she said you know are you gonna would you hire someone to design um or would you just have someone design themselves um, and then who is, who's actually going to do the actual painting of it. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of unknowns or a lot of things to be decided. And then the other thing that she mentioned is another, another way to start is to, um, to, to get other groups involved, like historic, um, like, commission. yes, arts commission, um, you know, so, so that would, you know, to have like a, a really, more of a coalition in, in creating this, but, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so that, that would be a nice idea for sure. Um, but you know, as, as we all know, coalitions take time. Um, and, uh, you know, once you get a lot of input from people as well. And also, um, you know, I said, so, so what are the, are the barns that are, you know, that are chosen? And she said, it's, you know, that they're public and private. So it's just, you know, um, it, it doesn't matter. You know, you would obviously approach the, the, uh, the owner of the barn if it's on private and, you know, just get their permission. See that most people love it. They're willing to do it. And, uh, and, and then kind of at the end, uh, I asked, and I probably should have asked this in the beginning, but I, I said, Sue, what, what is the, the overall purpose of this? And she said, um, you know, I was going, I was thinking she was going to go more with the Marge answer, which is, um, kind of like a, a symbol of the, um, of the agricultural past of the towns, uh, which is a big part of it. But she said it's, it's tourism. It, it brings in people, you know, to, mm -hmm. to these barn quilt trails. So it's good for the town if it brings in people to that will go on these driving tours of, you know, where, where these barn quilt on these barn quilt trails. So. Okay. So Marge, I don't know if you wanted to add to that. Um, or you know, if any, if anyone, had anything to add, or or you know, what what our next steps could be in this process? I just had a question. So it it the barn quilt isn't something that like a group of people sit around and make over a couple of weekends and then install. This is something that is planned and then ordered and it's then a design and, and the designs are thoughtful though there, there's a there's a reason behind the designs there's uh certain symbols colors all that goes into uh into the design and obviously the barn owner if, if it's on private property the barn owner has a, a lot of, or should have a lot of input on that design as well obviously obviously if it's going up on their property so she mentioned uh there's there's some quilts that were um in new milford that um, are like reflective of the family that lives there, uh, that, that lives on the property and, and things like that in terms of like colors or, or what kind of symbols appear and whatnot. So. Hmm. 
I didn't. Were we talking about Erickson? I thought no. You know, I think we were talking about uh, town-owned barns and anybody else that would be interested. I mean, when as you ride around and you see old barns, I mean, like the kind of the center church congregational has a big old barn, and then there's a big old barn right next to a uh, Newbury congregational, and if you get them in a certain area where people are out. I mean, if you had your trail and you had uh, had it mapped out so people could go from point A to B to C. And mm-hmm. I, I think, um, you know, as you all know, and you're all going to chuckle, you know I'm uh, technically unsophisticated. And, this, and I know, you know, there's a lot of knowledge to be put into this and it comes off of the computer. And I do have some nice brochures. I have a beautiful book on barn quilts all over the United States. And um, there's there's so many ideas. But to go to your questions, Julie, I, you know, I, I I don't know. And I, I think this is where I was. Sue was in charge. Sue Bailey's in charge of the, the Milford. And so uh, I she asked me if she could talk to Jeff, if I minded, if she called Jeffrey. And I said, this way it would be in the minutes. And mm-hmm. because I don't know, you know, whether who... Who can make them? Some of them are painted on the barns in the book that I have. Right, uh, right. You know, so I, I know it's it's not something that, you know, it's going to happen overnight. Um, but I think that, you know, I don't even know much about Brookfield Patch. If there are people who would be interested, who are, t- who are artistic and would be interested in getting involved, you know? Uh, in I, my I mind, it, when we first started talking about this, I was envisioning... Uh, community effort in putting it together and painting and designing and you know all of that I thought it would be the arts commission we could have volunteers and kids and families and girl scouts or something you know and making it a group effort but if that's not what's involved that's fine too I just I'm I didn't know that there was a company that made them. I, I don't know this myself. No, there, there, there isn't a, there, there's not a company that makes them. It's just, um, uh, you know, she, she had given me the, the dimensions. They're about eight by eight. Um, and so it's, you know, who, whatever, anyone could design it. I mean, we could design one. And then you would just need someone to paint that design on there. So you, it's not like a, you don't, there's not a company to go through. Okay. Uh, to do this, it, you know, it could be. It's very organic if you think about it. And I, yeah. I was just looking at some of the quilts too on this New Milford barn tr- barn quilt trail, and um, and and that, there was one that Sue had referenced. Like, there's maple leaves on on one of these quilts, and because that's a farm that had produced, um, you know, the syrup at one point, or or still does, or or whatnot. So, like those kind of things, some kind of connection with the, you know, it's not just a random design. There's there's like a thought into it, you know. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's all. Um, you know, I could. I think maybe a place to start is the um, the Arts Commission. I'm I'm trying to think of, of the name of the gentleman that that is uh, not the Arts Commission. The um, wow, I can't think tonight. Um, <laughs> You're a little busy. Down by Four Corners. What is the? Um, oh yeah. The craft. Not the craft. Yeah, the craft. The craft. Blaster. 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 That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Blaster. But I think arts would be very interested. I sit on that as well, and it's Catherine Malik. I bet she would love to have a conversation about this. Catherine Malik. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, I M-A-L-E-K. will get in touch with her. Yep. M A L E K. Okay. Yep. All right. So Probably, you know, it, it would make sense to have a committee, you know, to generate interest and to work, you know, like Sue just came forward with a name, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- I think that would be the best way. Personally, I think that would be the best way to get going with it. I don't know. And if yeah. you're ready to talk to the church, I can I can um, be a liaison for that, the Congregational Church. I mean, that would be such a wonderful spot for one there. Oh, you know? Okay. And even like at the tractor barn. I mean, even though that's not mm-hmm. an old barn, mm-hmm. you know when I say the tractor barn at the intersection, yeah. uh, yeah. which is a... Con- obvious spot. Maybe some of these people who own their own business would 
foot the bill on their that particular one. Maybe they would be glad to donate, you know, a thousand dollars to have one put up on you know? I don't know. But maybe they would. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think a way to start is just to to start with one property that we could get this started at, and and you know, if if we want to target Erickson, that yeah, that's a great start, you know. Mm. All right. Um, okay. I, yeah, I'll get in touch with, with Catherine Malik, and get her input on that, and maybe have Sue Bailey join us at a at some point to do that. To when will we? When will we meet? Yeah, when will we meet in um, together? In, in person. <laughs> are you, Marge? Are you vaccinated yet? Yes, I had both shots, and I can. I absolutely give a lot of credit to the Brookfield Senior Center. It just, it all came together so well for those of us that went there. It just. Well, I don't know what the don't. rules are in town hall about we're meetings. Not full, we're not even full staffed yet. That's probably not going to no. happen for a while. Yeah. So. It would okay. Have to do that first, I would think. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> no comment. So I'm gonna move on to um the pollinator pathway, and um I'll turn it over to to Cheryl or uh, or Julie about um the um you know the idea of of what you had shared, Cheryl, about about the no mo may. Um, and, and I don't know if, if you wanted to speak about that a little bit. Julie and I were talking last year about how we wanted to participate in No Mo May. And I think, Julie, did you actually participate last year? Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. mow my uh, dandelions all over the place. Yes. <laughs> so when Julie had sent out the note about the pollinator pathway, it got me thinking about No Mo May. And so I just Googled some ideas and that one idea popped up that scare mo. And I thought that was a really clever way of getting people excited about not mowing their lawns in the month of May. To make a little um, scarecrow scare quote unquote and made out of like flower pots and things like that to advertise that you're participating in this effort to not mow your lawn so that the pollinators can benefit yes i don't yeah, know so how we can it. turn that into a contest so if if you guys review the um just a little backdrop the the correspondence or the um you know what we've communicated over the last couple actually two weeks right julie the the article about the um about the monarchs right about the population being down correct yes Yes. Right. Yes, yes. Uh, and then, you know, Cheryl, you had you had sent out this suggestion, and then um, and then there was also, you know, t Tony, you you had shared this too about the, um, you know, what Lou's doing at Lou Memoli's presenting uh, via the library, right? In a couple weeks. I think that was some, something last night, right? Yeah, I sat in on the one last night, and then Lou's doing one on the pollinator pathway. Okay. So great. Uh, great. Later in, later in the month. Okay. So, so Tony, did anything come up? I mean, this is March seventeenth. Lose is March seventeenth. Yes. Okay. So, Tony, what what did you uh, what did you get out of that then yesterday? Oh, I I learned so much yesterday. Uh, things I never knew before. Uh, you know how uh, you know, for example, uh, for many crops, uh, honeybees aren't even the primary pollinator. I I, I really didn't realize that and. She went into a lot of detail about all the different types of native bees uh, in the area, uh, what types of crops they pollinate, uh, their lifestyles, and, and things that you can do to foster their thriving. Um, it, it was a very informative uh, session last night. It went about an hour and a half long. So is that on Zoom? Is that something we can go watch now? Is it recorded? I will have to inquire about that. I don't know if they record that and make it available after the fact. But Mary uh, is on the library board, so I can ask her whether that is a, a possibility. Yeah. And so what's kind of before us now is is what we can do, right? And and I know that, like, yeah, like Cheryl, you had suggested that, 
or, um, you know, the no mo may, um, idea, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and what other things people can do. I, I know that, uh, yeah, the, um, pollinator pathway is all about having the, the gardens right in, in the yards. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, another thing last night that, that I, it, I, I guess it's obvious in hindsight, but she talked about how important trees and shrubs are. People, when you think of pollinator, everybody thinks of flowers and potting and typical flowers, but uh, sh flowering shrubs and, and fruit trees in particular are very important. Anything that flowers early in the season is important because that's when the queen is out uh, uh, very busily, uh, you know, building the, uh, the colony or the, or the eggs or whatever. Uh, so there's, uh, there's a lot there. The bees are waking up now and looking for food. Skunk cabbage right now is where they're going to be getting most of their um, nectar, pollen, whatever from. Um, so it's really important in the early spring to have anything that can grow, grow. And grass and mowing your lawn is a bad thing. <laughs> Clover and dandelions are good. Do any of you get the Connecticut Magazine? There's a great article in there about the incredible and shrinking lawn, and it goes on all about just what you're talking about. Yeah. A nice article. Oh, as a matter of fact, the woman uh, last night said that her house, her lawn was going to be in Connecticut Magazine for just that. She kind of got rid of the really? entire lawn, and it's all different plantings now. Wow. What was her, what was her name? Oh, I... I I, I can't remember offhand. Hmm. Well, um, Louise. Oh, sorry. Louise Lasher. That doesn't sound familiar. No. Kimberly Stoner. Yes, Kimberly yeah. Stoner. Is that her? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it has a picture of her house with the with her lawn. Yeah. It's a great article, really. Um. I'm thinking, you know, as far as what Cheryl was talking about, perhaps Cheryl and I could work, we could contact Lou and maybe kind of advertise through Facebook with Conservation Commission and Pollinator Pathway together. We want people to participate in No Mo May and you can advertise that you're participating by building one of these Scarecrow thing. What is it called, Cheryl? Scare mo. A scare mo. A and scare put it, you know, display it in your yard. Because I know Pollinator Pathway, you could purchase a sign saying that your property is part of the Pollinator Pathway. By having one of these scare mos is another way to show that you're participating in no moment. Yeah, the only thing about about the no mowing is that you're gonna if you had if you found people to participate in that, um, well, I guess they they would have to be willing because then you would have, um, you know, with with not mowing your lawn, especially in May, right? Where which is you know we know how well the grass grows in May, um, and then you know I could see there being concerns about ticks. Um, yeah, well, what I do is there's a big section of my lawn that has clover and there, that part of my lawn, I don't mow. Okay. It doesn't have to be your entire lawn. Yeah. It's yeah. So yeah, I, I was envisioning like a, uh, you know, um, an overgrown. <laughs> <laughs> yard the neighbors complaining. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing that for years. People might think I'm crazy, but anything that, anything that flowers, I mow around it. And, and, uh, if people saw me mowing, uh, my lawn, they might think I was crazy, but I've, I, I never knew, heard of no mow may, but for the early part of the season, I leave large parts of my lawn uh, flowering with the wild flowers. Mm -hmm. I think, Cheryl, I think that website was from the UK, which, which maybe we haven't heard of it here. Um, it from the UK. <laughs> maybe they're big on that there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, I did bring small it up. Lawns. <laughs> I did bring it up too with the, um, First selection. One of one of the problems we've had is when people do not mow their lawn, people turn them into blight. Um, also, people complain about ticks and and mice and everything you can possibly imagine. We get hundreds of complaints. 
mm -hmm. um, about people not mow their neighbors not mowing the lawn. So there's going to be a lot of that. Um, and and Steve was wondering if he could see the science behind yeah. this. Um, you know, before we go ahead and do it. Okay, before we advertise not to mow your lawn. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, if we go the longest without mowing their lawn. Yeah, and, and as, if as, we as, if we could stress to only you know leave it to a portion of your property, make it available for for the pollinators. Yeah, or or gardens do the same thing. If you have all gardens right. and you know small amount of lawn, mm -hmm. would accomplish the same thing. And I mean, it is only May. It's not like we're telling people to grow your lawn to a foot high grass and make yeah. it a tick fest. It's just the month of May. Right. But we will have people who go much, much longer and say they're doing it in, for the good cause. Oh, God. <laughs> Why does it have to be so complicated? I don't know, but it is. <laughs> so, so what do you think our, uh, our next steps then should be with this? To maybe consult with, um, with Lou and, and and you know what suggestions he has for you know something town wide. I know I know Lou is very enthusiastic and passionate about this. Mm -hmm. I heard of no mow May last year. I didn't mow my lawn, so I, I it has been around. And hmm. people who are into pollinators and wanting to you know do this do it anyway. This is was just something I think Cheryl brought up to bring awareness to conservation and make it so that we can promote ourselves and do something fun. I, I got the impression that no mow May was because all of the plants that are growing in May, a lot of them are the, you know, grass area. And then by June, other flowers have bloomed and taken their place. So it's not don't mow the whole summer. It's just give the bees a chance to find the clover and the dandelions because they're usually the first two flowers up before they move on to other things in your garden. Is that right, Julie? That's what it's, yeah, that sounds right to me. All right. Um, well, uh, Cheryl and, and Julie, you're, are you on that, in, in that group, the, the pollinator pathway? I am and um, Ashley is, she's very active with Lou. Okay, great, great, yes. And, and Ashley is, is going to join us as well, I believe, uh, next month. I'm not, Cheryl, are you on the pollinator pathway now too? I am not, but I would like to be, and I yeah. already signed up for that March 17th. But okay, good. We could talk to him ahead of time, and if Steve looks at the information and you know sees the science behind it and thinks it's an okay thing for us to do, maybe we could have Lou talk about it at his um, pollinator pathway presentation. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the last item that I have uh, is um, the Trails Day. Now, speaking of Lou, Lou contacted me, I would say, uh, maybe beginning of February. and said, Jeff, you know, before you know what Trails Day will be here, I don't know what it will be look, what it will look like this year. And I said, oh, you know, um, you know, after I got that, after he contacted me, I went and checked out their website. And um, this is from the Connecticut Forest and Parks Association. The Trails Day is the first um, weekend in June. Last year, they didn't really do one. Um, and when I had checked the website, it, it said they said they weren't doing, it wasn't going to be a Trails Day this year. And then Alice had sent me something recently that's complete opposite, that they are. They're like full-blown doing it. But it's just... Um, it's a bit more technical now in terms of people who participate in, in trails, they need to sign up ahead of, need to pre-register online. And then there's a, uh, they have to also complete a health assessment uh, form as well. And uh, I mean, obviously a lot of this is for contact tracing purposes um, and to, you know, limit the number of people. But my, you know, my concern was, you know, because it's the first weekend in June, you know, um, what I was going to put out there to the group is, do we want to, do we want to participate in this? Do, do we want to um, pursue this? You know, we had a lot of success two years ago when we did the educational walk along the Greenway, but it was successful because we went to the people, mm -hmm. right? The people, the people didn't come to us. Mm -hmm. And in, in the past, when people have come to us, we have a, we've had a low turnout. 
And the thing is, if if I'm Joe homeowner, Joe resident, and uh, you know, I hear about this, right? Um, and and it, it's it's advertised, whatever. Let's say we're gonna do a um, a hike at uh, let's say Williams, for example. Um, I'm looking at that like, oh, I got to pre-register, and then um, you know, I got to I got to fill this out, or why don't I just go on my own? Right. Um, so I, I don't know how much of a turnout we would get from that uh, if we did something smaller at one of our properties. So that's why I wanted to like get your input and, and get your thoughts on that. Well, what kind of activities have we done in the past on Trails Day? We did. You had a run, right? We did a run. We did a. Um, uh, I forgot the name of it. Where they. It was, it was kid oriented where they find stamp or they get stamps. Uh, scavenger the- hunt it was a scavenger hunt and uh, um yeah and the the box thing. Yeah, I forgot what that's called. Oh yeah, my, I'm just like I'm I'm, I'm out of it tonight. But. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing the one thing I thought would, would could work, which would be which would be nice, is to have one of the tracking classes that summer puts on summer summer Hoogan Boom. So. Um, I saw something on Facebook where she had surgery or something. Oh, Did you, yeah. There, I. So you might want to check with her first. Yeah, this would be June. Um, I mean that, but but we would be relying on her to run this course on that weekend. So I, that's a, that's another thing we could pursue. We did get a good turnout when she did two courses at the Nature Center um, in August and September and got um, you know about mm-hmm. ten fifteen people. So it wasn't a bad number. Um, so and we, we did have a Girl Scout troop reach out wanting to help us participate yep. in whatever yep. we do. They would help us run it. So, but the other thing is we don't necessarily – we could have that tracking class from somewhere at any point. It's just, you know, we wouldn't be doing it on the official trails weekend, first weekend in June. So that that's what – so that's why I wanted to get your input. What, what you guys think, or if anyone has any ideas out there? Uh, one thing we I could do like a um, look for animal tracks. Like, is that what she did? She was looking for animal tracks. Uh, yeah, and then she does a. I mean, she has a background in that, and then she, she does a talk about that, and um, you know, she she goes out ahead of time and pre marks where the uh, tracks are, um, and you know, so she can do. It's a, it's a very informational thing. I love the idea of that and or a scavenger hunt. I mean, families could, if they wanted to go through the effort, like you said, we could write up a little scavenger hunt and have families go out, you know, together, but separate from others. That would be a safe thing to do. Uh, Marge, any thoughts on that? I'll put you on the spot. We need to do something. Yeah, that's my thought. So if, if I go we back, we don't want to disappear. I know. If I go back to our last, uh, our last March meeting, um, we did have the idea. This is obviously before before everything happened. We did have the idea for Earth Day of um, doing like a, a Still River cleanup. If some of you recall that, um, which obviously never happened um, because of, uh, of quarantine, but. Uh, maybe that's something we could pursue again, maybe some kind of Earth Day thing. Um, and maybe it doesn't have to be on Earth Day. You know, it could be at, at any point. Um, right. So. Jeffrey, I thought we were doing um, planting the uh, apple trees for Earth Day. We could, we okay. could plant the apple trees there, sure, sure. Okay, because we, we'll have them. I have to find out when we pick them up, but it's usually the weekend before, a few days before. Sure, Earth. sure. We'll do that for sure, yep. And uh, yeah, Tony, any any thoughts on this? Yeah, I like yeah, the, the uh, I like the idea of a scavenger hunt. And the other thing I think you were searching for the term was a geocaching uh, type. Yes, thing. thank That's you. Um, you know, maybe we could combine the two somehow. I, I you know, I. I so we that, have to coord- We would have to coordinate with Park and Rec or whoever mows because. I there was I set up some boxes and a Girl Scout troop set up some boxes in Williams Park and they just disappeared because 
<laughs> they clean and they, you know, I put them in when the grass was tall and they mow and just knock stuff over, not knowing that the boxes are there. Um, so they just have to be strategically placed. If, if we want to do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, if we want to do that. So, um, you know, we, we could do a, a, some kind of hike or, or whatever, you know, open to anything, you know. Maybe we could still do some kind of river cleanup um, on that weekend. I don't, well, I don't know. I, I don't, you know. Have you ever done a still river cleanup? No. It Has sounds very, ever... what? Sounds too intense. Sounds my wet. husband, my husband participated a, a few years when we first moved here. And it's, it's a huge project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's tires and engine parts and it's it's horrible. It's a big, big job. And although it's something that should be done, it's not just a couple of volunteers. I mean, you have to get canoes and kayaks out there and you have to find a place where you can bring all the garbage because there's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, I, I think I think we had talked about that, and, and I thought we I thought we were going to kind of do something more along the lines of um, you know trash that you see along the you know that is, that is that have gathered along the banks or whatnot to to pick up that kind of thing. But uh huh. Yeah. Okay. But no, Alice, I like that the planting of the uh, the apple trees. I forgot about that for Earth Day. That'd be great. Um, That'd be great. So yeah, if anyone has any suggestions or thoughts about that, or, or Cheryl, and any idea, like you know, if, what you think about Trails Day? I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. I'm not really familiar with it. It's like a statewide, um, it's like a statewide event that the uh, Connecticut Forest and Parks Association puts out, where uh, each town has um, or could sign up to host some kind of event. It's to get people to come out and. Um, you know, explore the the local protected properties and species. So, so. if if somebody, let's just use an example. If um, Summer wanted to do something or was able to do something or we had a Girl Scout troop say that they could make a scavenger hunt, the participants in that have to go on a state website and register and do a health survey first. Yes. yes. So in order to promote something through the town, we would have to have them go on to the state first. We, we're not doing forms or health checks or anything. It's they, and no, they, how they, would they, we know they, that they did that? What if they just showed up and said, I think yeah, we, we would, did that? I, the uh, the organizer, which is, you know, me or, or one of us, would be able to see that ahead of time. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. So if somebody didn't register, we would have to turn them away and they would be upset. Well, I, I was reading all the, the uh, all the, like, information they had, and there's a, there's a situation for that. If someone shows up who's not registered, then you kindly tell them. This is a, an event that required pre-registration. You can certainly um, do this at another time or something like that. I don't know. Okay. So. Okay. So. Um, but you know, you know who another person to go to on this is Lou, of course, because he, like I said, he initially contacted me and said he wanted to do something with our two organizations. Um, so may, you know, maybe, maybe we can pursue that. All right, and I, I did have that Girl Scout leader ask me if she mm -hmm. could help us participate. So can I go ahead and say, I'll tell her what we talked about? Yeah, I mean, we don't have anything definite, obviously, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, and then the thing is, too, it's, it's uh, as... As better as, as things have gotten, it's just, um, you know, you just never know how things are going to be by then. Um, it could be a lot better, and, you know, uh, I don't know. So, who knows? We're not going to be Texas. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
right. Well, anyone, uh, any, anything else, any other new business, anything else for the good of the order? I, I have a, I have a, a question and then, and then one thing. Uh, so we're, you know, it's March now and the giving garden will be uh, looking to uh, prepare for planting soon. And we still need to get them to sign a, a lease for the new season. And they were asking whether um, during COVID the, they should stop by town hall to sign the new lease or if there's, is there a way that we could uh, email them a copy of it, have them sign it, scan it and, and email it back. So I said I would ask uh, what the preferred method would be from the land use office. Um, they can do either way. They just have to make an appointment and we could meet them at the door or in one of the conference rooms, or they could do it online and scan it. That's fine too. Okay, do you, I, I've forgotten offhand whether we had gone ahead and updated that lease and it's all, all it's waiting for is their signature. I don't know. I, I think all that would need to be changed would be the dates because last year we did a pretty major rewrite. Mm -hmm. And Ginny has that? Yes. Or, oh, okay. I can check with Ginny. Want me to get back to you when I check with her? Yes, would you please? Yes, okay. Thanks. And the other thing I just wanted to bring up as a topic of discussion, maybe for uh, for next month, uh, I've been seeing an awful lot in the, the local media recently about uh, zebra mussels in uh, Lake Candlewood. And oh, yeah. uh, they were going to, they were uh, frustrated in their ability to do a, a, a better uh, search of the shoreline because of all the snow we had this year, but they definitely have found evidence of, of zebra mussel encroachment in the lake. And um, that's a very nasty critter that is uh, highly invasive and non-native. And if it, do you think it would be our place to try and take some kind of action to uh, increase public awareness, maybe get the message out there to make sure people uh, properly clean their boats before they come into Lake Candlewood. And also, uh, as I recall, that at some point in time, there was some sort of a, a boat cleaning station that uh, was looking for a place to be set up and never really got fully utilized. I remember so that. I wanted to bring that up again and, and see if, given this new heightened state of concern, uh, whether we might be able to find a, a place for that. Is Park and Rec working with the Lake Authority to do that already or? I do not believe so. But um, if you wanted to talk to the chair, it's Marianne Gaffey. Um, the problem with the cleaning station is that we have not been able to find a place that would take it. It's involved because you have leftover water afterwards and you have to you know, dispose of that. And probably more so are the, um, to have it in one spot, you need to have um, paid staff basically to be there for a weekend. And the way we also kind of looked at it is that, you know, you've got one cleaning station and all these places within the lake that people could be dropping their boats. So it's, it's something that never did get off the ground. Yeah. Thanks. But I'm sure Marianne would love to have help in going out and looking for zebra mussels. They're just waiting looking for, for zebra mussels. Yeah, I, I saw something in today's paper about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, the, the, the utility company has already started pumping water back into the lake, and they were hoping to do the survey while the lake was still at the, at the low point for the year. Right. I suppose if they act quickly, they still might be able to get something uh okay how, how, Mary Do, can, is there any way that Marianne Gaffey I can Tony totally, I can get you her number okay thank you could you send it to me too sure all right thank you um anyone else for any new business anything else for the good of the order nope all right well, we certainly had a lot. To, like I said, I think that's a good sign. We got a lot going on. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, 
a lot to uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of little things for us to do, and, and to, you know, a lot of information gathering looks like overall um, from our uh, agenda items today. So, um, yeah, that, that's all I have for tonight. Okay, thank you, Jeff. All right, thank you, guys. Um, thank you, everyone. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So, um, yeah, thank spring, you, guys. Everyone. Um, have a great night. Um, we'll be in touch soon. Okay. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.